Hi folks! This is Ray, your friendly neighborhood nerd, and today I'd like to tackle a topic uh, which is kind of, you know, people approach with mixed feelings, and this is drivers and Linux. And uh, this topic is all about the Linux kernel and how to build it yourself. No big deal, trust me, you will make it. We start out on a Debian virtual machine because it's easier for me to show it to you. And uh, there's one thing that is a kind of different to the usual install, which I will link above there. Uh, this is I use a drive for swapping out. This is just, you know, a little performance thing, nothing big. So uh, we are locked in on this default Debian machine which rocks the current kernel, which is one of the ones I built myself. Um, well, first things first, let's see if there are any updates. I'm using the um, and sign uh, twice to chain those commands together and uh, let's see what we get. I mean, I don't uh, expect there to be any big upgrades because I just installed the machine. To build a kernel, we need a toolset, so that's what we're installing here. Let me run you through the um, packages. The uh, build essential is a yeah, compiler, toolchain, all those things. Lin Linux source, that is yeah, what it's labeled, the sources of the kernel which we will compile or which we could compile. BC is a calculator, KMOD, kernel tools. CPIO is for compression, flex, and curse, and curses, elf, and that stuff is for, you know, its development headers, stuff to compile against it. We also need rsync and Python 3. I'm gonna drop here rsync to show you what happens if you miss out on any of those dependencies. So let's hit it. And we are about to install 86 new packages. So compiling is a huge operation. Let's do that. And as you see, the downloads are working very good as I'm using my local mirror. I'll see you when those packages are installed to keep the video short and sweet. Now the packages are installed and uh, let's have a look what we're building. I've logged in as a user here because you shouldn't do things as root, especially when you don't need the root privileges. Let's see, I'm heading over to kernel.org, which is the page where you can get the kernel sources. Latest one is 5.14.11, which is fine to me. I just copy the link and download them. Those downloads, they usually don't take long, but it's still, yep. 115 megabytes of source code. So that's that's fine to me. The kernel, that's where all the drivers are in, that's the core, that is Linux itself. So this might seem scary for a lot of people, but to build your first one, it's not a big deal. You have a pre-configured kernel running on your system and you can take those configs and build upon them and test. If it compiles, it's good. If it's booting, it's even better. And it's fantastic if all just works. So let's make that a fantastic one, shall we? Download just finished and we have the archive. So I'm unpacking those with um, the tar x j f command. Watch it, the j here is capital. And uh, we do care about uh, caps. That's a different command if you use the small j. Okay, that's unpacking our sources now. And if you know what you're doing, which means you have a lot of experience in kernel building, you can just configure it by hand. And this is the first thing I'm gonna show you. Sources are unpacked. 
and uh, we can use make menu config to start configuring the kernel if you wish. Oh, I'm just backing out here because this is just not the config I want to use. What I want to do is I want to look into the uh, boot directory and this is where we have the Debian config which is this one. And I'm gonna copy it over to config bind the dot because it's a hidden file. Now the fun part. As this is an older config, we might want to import it using make old config. And there we go. It will ask us a couple of questions if there are any changes on things we can choose from. And if you are not an experienced kernel builder, you can always get help uh, typing the question mark. And the default, as you see, which is the capital N here for no, gives you a pretty decent job on what to do or what not to do. So I'm just gonna default through here. And uh, then we will look into the menu config for a couple of reasons. First things first, we want to go to the cryptographic API stuff because the original Debian kernel is signed which means if you do not have the certificate then you can't sign it with that one and as we are not the official Debian builders we can't do that. So certificate for signature checking we just blank that out. Next thing I would highly recommend is kernel hacking and we just disable the miscangelous debug code for some speed up. But hey, what about the drivers? Now there's a good point to uh, just exit here and go to device drivers. And this is where you can take of your hardware, uh, take care of your hardware, pardon me. And uh, I'm gonna head down to, let's say the network device support and I'm going to look into <clears throat> Ethernet driver support. Here we go. The Ethernet driver support, this is where our network cards are located and I'm just gonna pick one to show you. And uh, as you see, the empty brackets, the um, pointy ones, that means nothing gets installed. If you hit the spacebar once, you get the M, which means it's built as a module and can be loaded afterwards, or you can compile it into the kernel with uh, the little asterisk here. So if you want to do that, it's up to you. And as a quick reminder, every kernel, every kernel got their drivers updated to the newest versions. They got some additions and some very old and ancient hardware stuff gets thrown overboard. And we just say exit. And as you might remember, we are missing the rsync package. So just to show you how missing dependencies show up. Uh, we could just do a make Debian package, but we're here to learn something. Our CPU, um, has eight cores, which is something that nproc will show us. So we can speed up make Debian package a little bit by adding minus J and the eight threads, which is for the eight cores we are running. As we hit enter, the script is about to start working. It's going to do its thing. And uh, as we're missing a package, it will, of course, error out. And I'll show you how this looks like. There we go. It says unmet build dependency rsync. Happy with that. So I'm switching over to the console with a uh, root locked in. I'm just going to install rsync and we should be good.
There we go. Now let's start over again. And now it is a good, 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 very good point of the install to grab an old game console, play your favorite game, and I will see you once the compile is finished. One eternity later. The compile finished and uh, let's have a look. Well, that's the sources directory. Nothing much changed here. So uh, we can do a make clean to clean up some craft uh, that happened while compiling some temporary files and, you know, remove some unneeded stuff. What's happening is the files are here, one level below. So what are we talking about? What are we looking at? So the first two things, that's the directory where we worked in and the sources. Headers, um, the image itself is the kernel, a C library, some built info changes, differentials and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, all pretty nice and dandy. So what do we do with that package now? I switch over to my administrator and here we are and I can install them using the D package minus E uh, minus I sorry my bad and uh, there we go all the Debian packages now we're installing the header um, the image and the C library. So that works pretty well. Once we have that finished, how to boot that new kernel? Well, just simply reboot usually. And in my case, we're having several kernels here. Um, if I type that right, here we go. And, uh, I can use the advanced options to select my kernel because I have done the VM kernel as a default before. And this is our new built kernel. Does it boot? Here we go. As you see, whenever something goes wrong, you can always uh, get back to a working kernel that way. So thanks for sticking along until the end. Thanks for watching. If you would like to know more, well, leave a comment, subscribe, or leave a like, thumbs up, whatever rocks your boat. And uh, if you want to catch me live, I'm streaming uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays around 5 p.m. Central European time. This is Ray, signing off for today.